I'm going to talk about is what Cantor did in the late 1800s that did show that the power set of a set is bigger than a set for all sets, not just for finite sets, so that it also holds for infinite sets. This is what we want to show. We're talking about set cardinalities, so that should get us thinking about the definition. We've got a surjective total function, and we're going to prove this by contradiction. So to get a contradiction, we're going to assume that it's not the case that the power set is bigger. That would mean that the set S has cardinality greater than or equal to that of the power set. If that's the case, that means between S and the power set of S, we have a surjective mapping. Every element of the power set, some function, we want at least one out and less than or equal to one in. If we have that, then S is the same size. If we're assuming S is bigger than the power set, that function must exist. So we're going to have some function G. We're proving for all sets. To show that it's not true for all sets, we just have to find one set that it's not true. Let's assume there exists some set. So that's going to be the set A. And for the set A, there's some function G from A to the power set of A that is a surjective. This is just following from our definitions. Now we got to do what's the real clever trick that Cantor came up with. We're going to have some set. There's some element of the power set. Everything in the power set is a set, and we'll call that a G. And we'll define that set as the set of all elements of A that are not elements of the set that the surjective function G maps to. So what we are trying to show here is that the cardinality of the power set is bigger than the cardinality of the set. So to get that contradiction, we're assuming the opposite, which would mean there is a function from A to the power set of A have one edge going into every element in the power set without needing multiple edges out from A. So if we have one edge into every element in the power set from a function, then we're covering them, then it's not bigger. That, yeah. Power set? Oh, I meant, thank you, sorry, okay. <laughs> Yes, it should be greater than or equal to. Thank you. You are absolutely correct. So we need at least one in. This is the bigger set. At least one in and no more than one out. Is that correct now? Okay. The contradiction we're trying to get is that if we show that A is not bigger than the cardinality set, not bigger or equal to, right? The equal to is the real case that we care about. Then we're showing the power set is actually bigger, which is the surprising result. Yes. So the last line, now we're going to define a set. So this is going to be the set of all elements of A where when we map them to the power set. right? So remember, the elements of the power set are sets that are subsets of elements of A. So G A here, A G is some point here, which we're defining now as the set of all elements where A is not an element of the set it maps to. Let's say A is the natural numbers. We have the number three. And we have a set in the power set, which is the subset 2, 4, and 7. That would be in the set AG because it doesn't map to the set that contains itself. If we had one, let's say, 5 here maps to the set, that would mean 5 maps to the set that contains itself. So it's not in the set AG. What's in the power set are sets of subsets of elements of A. We're defining AG as a set which is all the elements of A that map to sets that don't contain themselves. For the two examples I've, I've shown you, 3 should be in AG, because it maps to the set 247, which doesn't contain 3, and 5 should not be. If this surjective mapping existed, and I'm just making up what it might be, AG is well-defined. So how do we get a contradiction? So, so far, everything seems OK, maybe sort of OK. Remember that G is surjective. Every subset of A is in the power set. So this AG set that I've defined is here. It's an element of the power set. It's some subset of A. So it's in that power set set. There's got to be some element in A, we'll call it A, A of X, where G of A of X is equal to A of G. If that mapping exists, then there has to be some element that maps to the set that contains all of the elements that don't map to themselves. So is A of X inside AG? Let's think about the possibilities. So 
now we've got A of X. Set membership is a binary question. It's either yes or no. There's only two possible answers. Could the answer be yes? Good. It can't be yes, because that would contradict our definition of AG. Because our definition of AG is ones that don't map to themselves. So it can't be yes. It better be no. Can it be no? Well, how do we pick A of X? A of X is the one that maps to AG. So if it's no, it's got to be in that set that it maps to, because that's how we define the AG set. But it also can't be in that set. We've got a contradiction either way. If that was the case, what is the set that A of X maps to from G? Yeah, that's the A of G set. That's how we define it. So both of these are contradictions. Neither one is possible. We get to a contradiction, and we got to the contradiction by assuming this property, that the cardinal of A was greater than or equal to the power set. So it must be that the power set is bigger. So this was the result that shows there is a set bigger than the first infinite set, even though the way we define an infinite set is one that we add something to it, and it doesn't get bigger. So this is a pretty surprising result. Does this mean there's an uncountable set? Yeah. If the power set of the natural numbers is bigger than the natural numbers, and we define countable as there's a bijection to the natural numbers, then the power set of the natural numbers is bigger. And we have our uncountable set. Should bother you a lot. This bothered a lot of other people. These are the kinds of things people were saying about this when Cantor claimed it. He had a lot of people upset with him. Actually, it's a sad story. He took it pretty personally. But he knew it was right. So the more he thought about it, the more he looked at his proof, he knew it was definitely correct, despite all these old, distinguished people saying nasty things about him.